come to 7.6. As you noticed, we did skip 7.4 and 7.5. So we are just fast forwarding here and doing parallelograms. Okay, so hopefully we remember that a parallelogram is a quadrilateral where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Okay, so that has to happen before we can talk about theorems and proving theorems. So the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. All right, you would think that we would already know that, but this is actually a theorem. Now, of course, we need to prove it. So when I say prove a theorem, the given is sometimes the hard part to find, isn't it? In this case, the given is that I have a parallelogram. So you can say opposite sides are parallel because those are properties of a parallelogram. Okay, so here I have given you a hint on where we're going to go when we prove this theorem. So um, we could call that an auxiliary line. We could also call that the parallel, or I'm sorry, the line postulate, because any, the line postulate says between any two points there lies exactly one line. So there it is, the two points. We also have some more congruent angles, and I'm gonna let you think about that, why those angles would be congruent. Let's go ahead. And okay, so let's get started proving this theorem. We've already talked about the given. It, the parallelogram, we're just going to label it A, B, C, D, and it's a parallelogram. And then we have to talk about the two opposite sides being parallel. They're parallel, and we can prove they're parallel because we know we have a parallelogram. So that is the definition of a parallelogram. Now remember, we drew that line, that yellow line, and I would be okay with you writing auxiliary line. The only reason why your book is going to call that a line postulate instead is because it's more precise. You know, if you the line postulate says one line can be drawn between any two points, where an auxiliary line is just it's a it's a line that usually uh, doesn't have meaning, and, and this does have meaning. It's going to help us prove that we have triangles that are congruent here. So the next step is that I have opposite angles that are congruent. Remember in my drawing, um, I told you we'd leave that up to you later. Well, that time has come where I've got the opposite, the interior angles. Doesn't that ring a bell at all? Okay, so <laughs> the reason why I can call those opposite interior angles or um, keep saying opposite, but I mean alternate, alternate interior angles, right? And that is by the parallel postulate. So you can't just write alternate interior angles, that's a definition. And yes, by definition, those all are alternate interior, but remember that definition does not say that they are congruent, okay? The only thing that says the alternate interior angles are congruent is the parallel postulate because it talks about the lines have to be parallel. I can still have alternate interior angles when the lines are not parallel. Remember that. It's very important that you distinguish between that little, um, little difference there. Okay, so moving on, we can say that line is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. We've used that plenty of times now. And now I have angle side angle that says those two triangles are congruent. I also have side, 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 but the reason why I'm not using side, side, side is because I'm trying to prove that those opposite sides are congruent. So I can't use something I'm trying to prove. So now I've got those opposite sides are congruent by definition of congruent triangles. Okay, so let's move along to theorem 716, which says side, angle, side, congruent for parallelograms. It's exactly the same as when we had triangles, okay? But now we know the opposite sides are congruent, 
and if we have one angle, we know the opposite angle is congruent by another postulate. So it's really kind of crazy that this works for parallelograms. I do want you to go ahead and look at that, that proof, as always. It's on page 292, and it, I really, it does draw that auxiliary line that I just showed on the last slide that's yellow. Um, we will talk more about that proof in class, so please look, uh, look it over. The next theorem is a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if the diagonals bisect one another. So if and only if means what? It means biconditional. Okay, so we are actually can prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram in this case. Now, it's a rectangle if those diagonals are congruent. This is going to be helpful uh, later on, but we've talked about the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180. The sum of four angles of every convex quadrilateral is 360. So if you look at one diagonal makes two triangle, right? Opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. Okay, we've already briefly touched on this, but this one's important also. So if I have one angle, I know that the angle opposite is congruent, like this, and like this. Consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary. So just to refresh your memory, supplementary means that the angles add up to 180. So if I add angles one and two together, they will equal the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if I already can prove congruency of the sides, then I can prove it's a parallelogram. So it's the opposite of, um, is it, yeah, of theorem 7.15 opposite sides of a parallel, tel, parallelogram are congruent. This one's saying if we have them congruent, then we have a parallelogram. So instead of making a biconditional statement for a theorem, they're just separate. A quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides that are congruent is a parallelogram. Okay, so let's practice some of this information. I really do want you to pause before you answer. These are really important to understand. I don't care if you miss them all, um, but I do want you to try them all honestly and not and give an educated guess. If you have to guess, that's fine, but do your best to you know make a thoughtful guess. Determine whether the given figure must be a parallelogram and be ready to explain your answer. So, is this a parallelogram? And if it is, why? And if it's not? The answer is yes, and the reason is, hopefully you're writing down reasons because I want you to understand why. The opposite sides are parallel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, opposite sides are parallel based on the parallel um, postulate. They've got alternate interior angles. Here, I need to determine whether the given figure must be a parallelogram. Okay, so one of our postulates says that we just learned that if we add up angles 1 and 2, they need to add up to 180. Is that the case? Let's try that first. Okay, they do. Now, what would be another thing to consider? Another thing to consider would be the sides. Okay, so yes, we have um, consecutive angles, supplementary. We also would say the opposite angles are congruent. We could add them all up. We'll get 360, but we have to be careful here because we also don't have any information about the sides and if the sides are parallel. So really the only thing we could for sure say is that this was a trapezoid, which means I have one set of parallel lines. So unfortunately, um, we 
just we don't know if they're parallel or not um, if we have two sides parallel okay we can't prove that the opposite angles are congruent here okay so is this a parallelogram well we definitely have one set of parallel lines but we don't know about the other okay so this could be a trapezoid and how about this one the diagonals bisect each other right they are finding the midpoint of each diagonal so the sides of each diagonal are congruent and we know a new postulate about that so the answer is yes about this one. So we definitely know that the angles are opposite one another, are congruent. <clears throat> this one's a little trickier. I still only have one set of parallel lines, okay? Um, I might have the right angle measures that I need, but I, the parallel lines are what's important here, okay? We don't know anything else except the, the set that um, has the transversal. Okay, so for your WISC summary, in your own words, I want you to compare and contrast the terms tetragon, trapezium, and quadrangle. All right, obviously you can Google these. I want you to you know, define them and say how they're the same and how they're different and give me some examples. So um, it's really important that you are thorough. Some of you are not being thorough. You're trying to be as brief as possible. I'm okay with brief. I just want it to be thorough. And if you are not um, complete, then you're not doing the assignment correctly. So I will see you in class.